Welcome back to Arcade Sunday. Today I'm just going to have a quick look around the arcade and um, possibly play a game that I've been meaning to play for quite some time in my arcade, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. I'm going to try a few coins of Double Dragon 2 The Revenge and see how I do. It's Arcade Sunday. Alright, so this is Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Um, we're going to have a few coins just to see um, how we go along. And, um, Start off the game as of the first version where they just kidnapped that uh, girlfriend of theirs or whoever that is. Let's scam the killer, that's real good. Anyway, um, so this is a game I played uh, quite a fair amount of. Uh, it was in our, or available in our local arcade, small arcade. And I often played this uh, in two-player mode uh, or two-player version. Um, playing one player was not really a thing. I think because the game was so popular that um, you couldn't really get a one-player game. And even if you wanted to, someone would just join you, even though you didn't know them. That was uh, highly annoying, I must say. But anyway, that's what it is. So if you're not aware. Double Dragon 2 The Revenge uh, employs a three button control system where you are one, two, and three, so forward, back, and jump. Um, and those can be used strategically um, to do other moves if you're facing backwards without the weapon. It will become a back kick. If you have a weapon, this here, back kick. Straight as quickly as a back kick, and then if you face it forward, the same button will become a punch. So it's a quite a unique system, and I believe once you get used to it, it's actually um, pretty good. Okay, well, I was asking for it there. Okay, so take this box and let's kick it down. Okay, so that's a strategy, you can just hit them once and, and carry on on your way. Um, where's this guy? Okay, so it starts off uh, obviously uh, relatively straightforward. Um, and the good old uh, elbow attack is still intact. Um, doesn't work for all enemies as, uh, as well as it used to. This guy, this party is large, the size is not very uh, strong, so I'll just get rid of him quickly. Yeah, nice. He nearly showed me up there. Nonetheless, I will get past this guy, take this box and this lady here. Yeah. Now these ladies, they always go back for their whip, so on the chain whip. So if you stand in the path of them, uh, they'll always kind of walk into your attacks. Okay, there's one people got a knife, and uh, not today. I think there's a knife coming out here somewhere. Oh yeah, there we go. Ow! Take that and take a knife. Oh, that was a bit silly, but at least the red guy helped me a bit. Take that. Okay, so coming up onto the first boss, um, when we get there, okay, here's another trick there. Um, if we can get this right, oh, and he was taken off for coming in, okay, darn it. Oh, this guy's gonna punch me down there. Mm. Okay. Okay, now there's a spade or a shovel trick here. Um, this guy comes in with a shovel. If you fast enough, like that, you can actually get that weapon. And he's gonna throw it away now. Oh man. Yeah. Well, it was an opportunity to get the shovel. Um, I was nearly dead anyway, so it wouldn't have really helped me that long. Okay, here's the first boss. Now there's a, a way you can stand here somewhere and uh, he can't get you. 
quite a good trick if you can get the timing right. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes he just wraps around the corner and then come and gets you anyway. So should be okay. Now what you really want to do ultimately is actually make it through this first stage without losing one of your lives because well as of any game you don't really want to die but um, this is quite possible to finish this first stage without um, losing a life at all just by using this back kick uh, trick here in the corner here. it's uh, you know some might see it as a little bit cheap but um, it's still quite difficult to get the timing right they grabbed me so I wasn't up away enough so now I'm just, just out of his path and then we okay yeah. and there's he okay he disappears into the ether strangely enough Okay, you'll notice here you should uh, get some um, power um, for getting onto the next stage. And there we go. So if you hadn't lost a life by now, you would have had full power on your first life by now, which is exactly where you want to be in a great start to obviously the uh, second stage. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like it for me now. Again, I'm not playing very seriously right now. This is but just more to demonstrate uh, the game a bit and um, some little tricks of the game. So in any event, um, take this and throw it back. Oh, too late. Didn't really use it very well. Oh, where did the grenade go to? It disappeared. Oh well. That was interesting. Okay, three on one isn't fun guys, come on. Oh man, I should have just... Oh, he was holding it. He was holding it. <laughs> I think I'd been holding that grenade the whole time. Oh well, if I'd known that, I'd probably used it a bit earlier. Anyway. Whatever. Okay, this guy's a bit tough, this really the guy, yeah. Okay, come here. Just throw that down there. And actually, you can keep your enemies uh, into that hole over there. Um, if you do it right. But you can, you can throw them down into there and uh, that's the end of them. Okay, now these guys here again, I don't like this guy with this red hair, I don't like him. Let's get rid of him. Okay, up we go. Okay, again, standing here, you can't get hit, so it's pretty easy to get through there. And, oh my word, okay. Take that. I thought this get that enough. Rick up! There's a lot of detail in this, in the graphics of this game, it's actually really, really well done. Now, uh, I know I always say that about these games, that they look uh, very 320 by 200 low resolution, uh, but um, I still believe the graphic styles are so great and, and well done considering what hardware these guys had to work with um, and the originality of uh, these games and play mechanics, especially well in this game, their play mechanics are very unique and would be anything like it before. So very cool, very unique game. Oh. So I got a knife there. I had a knife there, and I'm gonna ah, don it. Okay, well that's probably gonna be the end of me now on this credit. No Okay, so I'm just gonna put a. I actually have quite a good score there. Okay, I didn't put my name in because. I don't know why I didn't. It actually was a perfectly valid reason to put my name in there. Well, let me just try and focus on getting rid of these little guys first. And if I can get that, it'll be great. Oh man. I'm kind of stuck in the, in the corner here, so I'm going to try and scoot around them. Okay, 
must definitely get rid of all these little guys first. They really do get in the way. You don't have enough time to actually um, get any good hit at the boss there. elbow trick but it's not as uh, effective in this game as it was in Double Dragon 1 at all. Okay, so hopefully this guy has gone now, one of them. Just can't deal with all these enemies at once, yeah. And the game like goes through like a speed up and slow down cycle, it's like uh, quite annoying. Okay, well that's it. So now you just kick him in the knees a bit. Do it fast enough, then you should be fine. If you get to a point, just back kick, and you'll just easily get him. Just stand still, just back kick really quickly, and that's really the end of that boss. Okay, on to mission three. These. Uh, Guys are pretty tough. Uh, these all the green clothed characters on this stage, they just take a lot of hard work to get rid of. Um, again, I suppose if you're pretty careful and uh, try not to get in the path of them or get punched by one of them or get knocked down, then you could actually do okay here. I'm not gonna do this one hit where I can, one hit, one punch where I can. Uh, kind of, oh, let's see, how silly. But uh, I'm sure that I'll get out of here with pretty much most of my power and energy. Okay, great, now some more of them. Okay, very, very quick as well, I've noticed. Um, get that knife. Oh. Okay. Knives are pretty powerful, I believe they're most uh, single best way to knock the power down significantly of any of the characters. I'm not too sure about the bosses though, I don't think it really affects them more than just getting knocked down normally, I've got that feeling. In other words, throwing a knife at a boss doesn't yield a higher uh, power knocks, so it's mainly for the, these kind of characters uh, regular. Enemies. Okay. Nice little fancy roundhouse there. Oh, that spade again. That's a great, great weapon. That doesn't present itself very often in the game. In fact, uh, this is the second time where you can actually only get it if you hit him before he throws it. Um, otherwise, it's, he throws it right off the screen and it's gone. So yeah, it's a bit of a Pain, but a great weapon if you can get it. Okay, so we're coming up to oh, <laughs> guy jumps out of the hay there. Um, coming up to a part of the classic uh, combine harvester, we should be getting there shortly. That's a very iconic scene in this game. In fact, um, probably one of the most iconic in Double Dragon 2. Um, as far as the scene is concerned, it's just one of those where. You just got to get your timing right, and there's a lot of enemies, and yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit tough. And it's a bit of a, I think back in the day, until you kind of know how to do the timing correctly, it's a, basically a coin eating part. Um, similar to in Double Dragon, the first game, where about like the same part, it's probably about halfway through the third stage or so. There's a the uh, iconic uh, stage with the the bridge and uh, the water underneath, and um, if you don't uh, time your jump 100% perfectly, you basically you fall in and you, and you die. Uh, so you basically got to put another coin in at that point if you haven't got an extra life. Similar to, to this part coming up soon. Let's see it shortly. Okay, shouldn't be long. I think we've got a couple more of these hard green guys to uh, get rid of. Um, but it's a matter of time. Uh, 
Let's see how hard they are. Yeah. Very strong characters. Another one jumping out of the hay there. Very surprised. And you also see he avoided that elbow attack. Um, as I was saying earlier, some of the characters just avoid the elbow, elbow attack. And uh, it's just not worth or possible, in fact, to, to hit them with an elbow. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a way to go still. Here it is. Okay. Now you'll see the lights come on. When the lights come on, then you know it's about to, to move. Darn it! Is that saying that? So again, here yeah, it's a matter of okay, I've just lost an arm. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and get rid of this guy. Oh no. Okay, well, I'm gonna miss that sweep. It's a bit tough now. Okay, you see there, he, he also avoided my elbow. I think if you're not exactly on point. Ah, didn't jump a ton. I've got to get at least one of them right. Wow. Come, 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 come. Yay, finally. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like as the lights come on, like a split second after you must ah, push jump and avoid the spade man. It's the third, third spade uh, or shovel. Oh, and of course, that's still active. <laughs> anyway, so I got past this iconic stage. Now, um, really, uh, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, it's, it's a really great development on the first game. The, the control system is great. The only negative thing I think I have to say about this and unfortunately the first one although the first one is a bit more forgiven forgivable but that slowdown in the gameplay um, if they could have just somehow got that to not be like that in other words maybe added another processor you know I get it uh, this game's probably cost a lot of money to uh, create back in the day so the guys really try to push as much as they could you know with the hardware that they had anyway uh, if you haven't played Double Dragon 2 before, um, definitely give it a go. It's a great game, um, unique control system. Highly recommended Arcade Sunday.